Okay, more. <clears throat> Wait a minute. So. Okay, more um, ECS adventures. So this video, I'm going to be kind of going over more basic informations regarding ECS and kind of just, you know, what it is and why it's kind of worthwhile learning about it. So, yeah, let's get into it. So the first is, what is it? What is ECS? And why do we even bother and use it? So it stands for Entity Component Systems. And it's a type of pattern. So it's a type of software design, um, which means it's like the way you write your code. Some example of software patterns are like functional, object-oriented, etc. So the ECS falls under this umbrella of pattern called data oriented design, which in the later kind of videos, I'll kind of explain what that is. And the point of this design in high level, it's that, or rather of ECS, is that we're separating data from its behavior. So for instance, like uh, if we have a, um, a classic object-oriented example, right? Like a dog, whatever. You create a new class dog, and then you assign like bark or move whatever methods to that class, right? That's the object-oriented way. But in ECS, we kind of separate those behaviors like bark or move outside of the data. Um, and the benefits of this object data-oriented designs is that you kind of um, separate, since you separate data from behaviors, it's easier to kind of mix and match. So the bark and walk methods, right? They're not kind of a They're not part of the dog. They're like kind of general. So you could, you know, create a cat and a cat, you can assign like, you know, components, whatever that can make it move so that the walk method or walk function rather performs on the cat. You could even make the cat bark, even though that's not kind of realistic, but you can do it. And that's the beauty of kind of ECS. And so that falls onto the next point, which is kind of easier to create features, right? Like because those systems are kind of isolated, you can always kind of add components, remove it, whatever, and your systems can all magically work on your entity. And this kind of way of adding, removing components is kind of the meaning of dynamic coding style, where you can basically um, add or remove certain components from runtime, which eliminates some systems that are running on that specific entity, right? Like, so let's say you wanted to kind of stop the dog from barking, well, just remove whatever components that causes dog to bark, right? And all of a sudden your dog's not gonna bark anymore. And lastly, you're kind of already using some concepts of ECS, whether you kind of, uh, you know, know about it or not. And this is through collection service. So collection service works by assigning tags to your instances, right? You can assign multiple tags, you can listen to tag changes. You can kind of, you know, know what parts or what instances were added to this tag, right? This is this is just basic concepts of ECS with other systems part. So now I'm kind of gonna go in depth about a little bit in depth about what ECS is or like the specifics of ECS and starting with components since I think it's much easier to kind of explain. So components are just datas. That's what, that's it. Like it's nothing, anything special. It's just data. It's supposed to be plain data. Um, ideally it doesn't contain functions, but honestly, I will, it's okay to break rules, right? Like sometimes if you, 
add function, if you have functions as the data itself, you will sometimes come across like that that is the mo more cleaner code solutions. But generally speaking, it does not contain functions. It doesn't contain behaviors. And it just contains plain data like numbers, strings, and tables. An example is in this picture where um, a component is kind of denoted as this ball. Even though in picture you see three balls, I'm kind of assuming that it's just a one single ball. Right? That's it. Entities, on the other hand, is kind of like a container. So from this visual, I kind of outlined the net. So this means that this net is an entity. And in technical perspective, entity is just kind of a unique identifier. So, and it just kind of holds some components. It can hold multiple components or it can even hold zero components. When a component, when an, um, when an, uh, a world is basically a collection of entities. So in this kind of example, you can consider this white blank space as a world. And lastly, systems are basically pure functions that kind of match the entities that contains specific sets of components. So what does this mean? If you see in the kind of example here, I have a system that throws the ball to the hoop. So what it's doing here is that it's kind of going over all the um, entities that contains a ball component, right? In this case, it's this, this, and this, and it's kind of throwing the ball to the hoop. So it's kind of modifying the ball data or the, this entity's data so that it kind of goes from here to here. And that's exactly what a system does. It kind of, you know, queries over the specific sets of components and then it kind of transforms or it transforms it or something. Next, I kind of want to go a little bit about what the differences between ECS and object oriented is. So in object-oriented, um, datas and behaviors are together. So like I said earlier in the previous example um, of dog, right? A dog could have, a dog class would have bark or walk or et cetera, right? And they're all together inside a class. And so if you wanted to have, create a cat class now, a cat wouldn't have, a cat class wouldn't have bark but it would still have walk, right? A walk method. Well, what do you, what would you do in this case? Well, there you would kind of create like a generic class, right? Like a mammal or something that has the walk uh, method and then have those dogs and cats inherit from mammal. Um, so it would inherit the walk method, but then the cat class would have an additional method called meow or a dog class would have an additional method of bark, right? Um, in ECS, this is a little bit different. We don't have those syst those behaviors tightly coupled together. Instead, they're separate. So we just create like a dog entity that contains com whatever components required to make it bark and make it walk. So in order to make it walk, we could have like a position component attached, uh, added to the entity, to the dog entity. And to make it bark, we could just have like a bark component, right? And then the same for goes for the cat. We would have, it, we would create a cat entity, which is just by the definition of entity, uh, just a unique ID. And then we would attach, again, the position component so that the uh, position component, and then we would add a, maybe a new component called meow which causes, which is for making the cat go meow. <laughs> and then we have a system that iterates over the position and updates their position. So essentially both the dog and the cat entity is now able to walk due to the system, right? And then we didn't have to do any kind of inheritance or anything. Everything is kind of, since it's loosely coupled, it's very easy to kind of 
um, uh, since it's, you know, separate, it's very easy to kind of create new features or, you know, yeah. <laughs> and then, um, another thing is in object oriented, we kind of have this idea of encapsulating data through access modifiers. So like private, protected, public, right? Every time you create a class, you probably came across like, you know, public, blah, 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 this, private, this, 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 right? There are private variables and public variables. Private variables are things you don't want to kind of expose to the, expose to outside. And then the public is the things you would want to expose outside. By default in ECS, everything is flat, right? Like there is no concept of hiding things, right? So this way, any system can basically uh, iterate over some entities and grab its data. So the data is never hidden. Now, um, the advantage of this is that you no longer have like, you know, need to kind of worry about like, you know, like having a system uh, access inf information from another system. So like a common issue you see in object oriented thing is that because data are sometimes hidden, you would need, it becomes kind of difficult to kind of pass data to another, another uh, class or manager or whatever. In ECS, we don't have this issue. So now why would we want to use ECS in Roblox? So some of the motivations for this is that object oriented is difficult, right? And in Lua, like types are kind of for object oriented, very difficult. Although there's been like a lot of improvements on it, it still kind of sucks. <laughs> in ECS, generally, it's not that difficult to have good types. Um, some libraries still kind of have bad types, but the library that we will be using, which is JECS, it has pretty good types. And then the object oriented way suffers from the diamond problem, which is basically multiple inheritance. So the one that I explained earlier where well, I didn't explain that actually, but basically when an, when a class needs to inherit multiple uh, other classes, that's a diamond problem because um, you can only have, a class can only inherit once, right? Like you cannot have multiple inheritance, but sometimes you may want to have multiple methods from two different classes. Well, what do you do? You would need to use something like composition in object oriented. But in ECS, composition is first first class, so like you like you don't really run into the inheritance issue. It's also much easier to use existing logic, and that's because systems are isolated, right? Like they they aren't tied to each other; they aren't tied to some class or etc. So you can kind of just uh, use it by just adding whatever components it needs, right? Like let's say. Um, uh, I have a health system with a health component, right? And I attach a health to a player. So the health system is going to be able to update that player's health. But let's say I want to make like a breakable wall. Well, what can I do? I can just attach the health component to the wall as well. So now the health system is going to be able to iterate over the walls as well. So we kind of added like a real, little bit of reusability here. It's also much easier to access data. So kind of come like circles back, circles back to the earlier point I made where like in, in object oriented way, it's kind of difficult to share data because you, the whole idea of encapsulation is that you kind of hide the necessary data from each other, right? Uh, but in ECS, because the data is always flat, it's becomes kind of um, easy to access. And then these are just kind of uh, niche benefits, but still we have hot reloading. So what does hot reloading mean? It means that you can kind of update your systems while your game is running. So you don't need to kind of pause and then press play again to test out a feature. You can just have the game running and then just update your changes as you go. And then you will see it in the real time. And the reason this is possible is because systems runs every frame, right? Um, and then last 
point is better debugging experience because a lot of these ECS libraries already kind of have add-ons that give like better debugging experience, right? You're able to pause your systems. You're able to query your uh, components from the, through the debug debugger. And that kind of helps you like kind of figure out the problems very easily as opposed to event driven, which is probably the hardest to debug. Now, why not ECS? This is also something to consider. It's that it requires you to change your perspective. And coming from an object-oriented background, it kind of becomes much more difficult because you're already kind of drilled into thinking every, thinking every kind of concepts in object-oriented way. That's because you are taught object-oriented in school. So that's why it's a little bit difficult to kind of get started on it. And it's also kind of difficult to learn due to that because, you know, it's, there's not, not a lot of videos on videos and resources on ECS compared to object oriented because it's, it's not a new concept, but it's like not a very popular concept. Although kind of these days it is gaining popularity. Um, and then you don't really have much uh, performance benefit in Roblox uh, compared to things like Unity and etc., where like it's a lot better to use ECS. Uh, but still, there can be uh, because of the way it's structured. Um, and then the last kind of downside is that it's a little bit tedious to set up. By set up, I mean like, you know, like you got to set up your in an actual project, you got to have to set up your scheduler. You got to have to set up your debugger and etc. Although it's not too bad, especially like these days, there's a lot of libraries that can kind of simplify this process. So the next step is just um, kind of learning more about JCS specifically and how it does things a little bit differently. Not too different, but some concepts are a little bit different for instance, for like example, components in JCS are just entities. So yeah, next steps would be to kind of going over them. Yeah, that's about it.